All right, let's draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. We'll also talk about its Vesper shape. Carbon brings four valence electrons with it, and oxygen, of which there are two, brings six valence electrons each. That makes for 16 valence electrons total. I like putting my central atom in the center and my outer atoms on the outside. Carbon has a lower electronegativity. Lower electronegativity atoms generally go in the center. And in addition, carbon likes having four bonds. Oxygen likes having two. I like the atom that has the higher bonding capacity in the center as well. I like single bonds between each of my outer atoms and the center one. That accounted for four electrons total. Then I fill the octets on my outer atoms. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm out of electrons. That's all the valence electrons I've been afforded. Now, we need to move electrons from lone pairs on the outer atoms into bonds so that carbon satisfies the octet rule. And make no mistake, carbon always satisfies the octet rule. So I'm going to move one of these electron pairs into this bond, make that a double. And I'm gonna move one of these electron pairs in here and make that a double. If you're wondering why we don't move both electron pairs from the same oxygen, it has to do with formal charge. The formal charge on carbon would have been the same, but the formal charge on this oxygen would have been minus one and this oxygen would have been plus one. We don't like having positive formal charges on electronegative atoms, and least of all when we can avoid it. And we can avoid it here by making two double bonds, which is a little more balanced, right? If you're into Vesper, you'll notice that the Vesper notation here is AX2 because we have two atoms attached to the central atom. And that makes for a linear molecule. Uh, that's probably not a surprise. How far apart can two things or electron repulsion areas get? pointing in opposite directions at 180 degrees to each other. The other, only other thing I'd like to point out here is that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so there is a dipole pulling this way from this carbon towards that oxygen. But there's also a dipole pulling this way from the, from the carbon to that oxygen. And because they're both oxygen, they both pull equally, and these two dipoles cancel each other out. One's pulling to the right, one's pulling to the left, and they're pulling with equal strengths. It's like a tug of war, and they have an exact tie. Because of that, even though the bonds are polar, the molecule itself is nonpolar. And so, the strongest intermolecular force, if you know what those are, is London dispersion forces. There are no dipole-dipole interactions, or dipole-dipole forces in a sample of CO2. All right, there you go, best of luck.